already got this side pulled off. I'm going to go over here and remove the other side tin. It'll just let us see what we're doing a little bit better and uh, just makes filming much easier. Here we are behind the gas tank, directly under the battery is one of the largest mouse nests I have ever seen. It's just stinking huge. So between the battery leaking over the years and, oh sorry camera, I just hit you. So between the battery leaking over the years and this mouse nest, this whole bottom tray down here, this side's actually not bad. The other side's just completely gone, just from all the mouse pee rotting it out and the battery acid leaking. Um, this here is the cable we need. This will provide 12 volts to the coil. I'm going to go ahead and clean this whole mess up and we'll get going with uh, getting power to the coil and seeing if we have um, points that are working. I've got the 12 volt battery stuffed in there. It barely fits, but it does. I did not reverse the polarity. It is still a positive ground. So the positive post comes down here and actually bolts right to the frame and this is the negative on the starter. Then right here I put a ballast resistor in line with the coil wire. So that will knock our 12 volts down to somewhere around 6, so we don't cook the coil. And then the generator over here will be fine. It's still going to try and charge the battery. If it works, it's going to be putting out, you know, somewhere a little north of 6 volts. It's not going to hurt the battery, it's just not going to charge it. Um, I think we're just going to gamble. We're going to dump some fuel in it. We're not going to pull the carburetor off, just going to dump fuel in it and uh, see what happens. Alright, I checked the oil level and it was full. I just dumped gas in it. Let's see if it starts. <laughs> All we had is sputter. The choke hardly works. The throttle is stuck. Let's see if we can't get it to, to go. Let's build an oil pressure. You can see when I crank it, the oil pressure gauge goes up. So that's a good sign. I checked spark and it was kind of funky, so I'm going to check to see if the uh, points are working properly. I disconnected the wire going to the coil from the points, and if they're opening and closing, the test light should flash when you crank it. Right now, they're closed, which is why the light's on. It should flash, indicating that the points are opening and closing. So my points are working. Well, I found the source of the problem. The ignition switch is kind of hit and miss. Big surprise, it's who knows how old. And I've got good spark now. Let's uh, try again and see what happens. I've decided to go ahead and pull the carburetor off. We're not going to get lucky. I don't think it's going to just start up. It has sputtered a time or two, but it's not going to start. This is the battery that I removed from it. You can see it's only 10 years old. I was hoping this thing hadn't run for, you know, 15, 20 years, something like that. But um, it has clearly run, or at least tried to be started in the past 10 years. So more than likely there's ethanol that's been run through this carburetor. So we're just going to pull it off, drop in the ultrasonic cleaner, and uh, get it cleaned up. Another issue I need to address is the shifter seems to be stuck in a non-gear. Based on the gear shift pattern, it looks like it's stuck to the left of 1 and directly above R. Um, it does have the nice spring action, which leads me to believe that it's actually in neutral. Because when it's in a gear, it doesn't spring like that. But it just seems like it's... If you look at the angle of the shaft, it looks like it's kicked forward like it's in gear, but... I don't know. I'm going to yank these four bolts out quick. 
uh, pluck it out of there and see what's going on. Well, I've discovered the problem. When we were loading this on the trailer, I told my brother to just shove it in any gear, which he did, and I said, don't worry about it, you're not going to hurt it. Well, he hurt it. You can see there's two shift rods over here. There's a third one that should be here that's actually all the way out the back side of the uh, housing here. So, I'm assuming that's why I can't get it to come back forward because he, whether something was loose in here, I don't know. He got this rod back so far, I can't get it back through this little part here, which is not allowing it to come out, which is also keeping it jammed in this position over here. Hopefully I can get it out of this non-position by getting this shaft back into place. Well now here's a better view of it. You can see the shaft is back inside the housing. It was completely out the back of it here and I don't know if that's a design flaw if something's a little loose, out of adjustment, I don't know. Maybe they didn't plan on somebody trying to ram it into a non-gear, but then again, it is a tractor and people just uh, pound on these things. You can see this fluid in here is pretty uh, gross. It's supposed to be 90 weight, so uh, we're gonna have to drain this at some point. I think it holds five gallons of it, but at least it has fluid in here. Better than being dry, I guess. I just put the shift cover on, I ran it through all the gears, put it in reverse, and I thought, just for the heck of it, I'm gonna push it forward again, see if I can put it and that non-gear and it slipped right in easy as could be so there must be something wrong in there I visually inspected it quickly I didn't see anything but I'm gonna have to get a manual online for this thing and see just how um, to adjust adjust those shift forks I know there's different specs on how far the forks are supposed to be on those rods and whatnot so it clearly needs some adjustment because I barely put any pressure on this and it went straight from reverse all the way up into that non position so Oh well, what do you do? I guess I'll have to pull that cover off again and get that back in where it goes. So you can see I'm trying to remove the pulley from the PTO shaft here. You pull the three bolts out and then you run them back in those two holes. Well, I didn't have any grade 5, just grade 2 in stock. And it felt like it was going to snap off so I gave up on that. And I put the old rusty grade 5 in there and it did snap off. So then we got the sledgehammer, tappy tap, get out the lady feet, try and pry on it to no avail. So then I think, well, I'll put some chisels in there, see if I can't spread the two halves apart. And it did spread them somewhat, but that inner part was just so stuck on the PTO shaft. Um, I ended up getting a bearing splitter, which easily fit in there. And uh, then I pulled it off with the uh, three jaw puller. I could not get the three jaw puller around that part without the bearing splitter installed. That's definitely much harder than it should have been. It should have been as easy as removing the three bolts putting two of them back in the other holes and it should have came right off. So for these jets that are way down and deep like this, what I like to do is take a screwdriver you think is going to fit and Every screwdriver is pretty much like this, where it starts narrow, widens up, and then narrows back down. I grind it completely straight on the sides, so it's a straight shaft the whole way. That allows you to actually get down inside the hole and get to the jet, and the screwdriver itself is not jamming up on the sides of the hole. Well, I now see why my carburetor leaked. Somebody tightened the drain nut so tight, or I guess it's not a nut, it's a plug. Either way, they tightened it so tight, it split the bottom of the bowl here. I think that'd be a good thing to braise, if I could braise, but I can't. So, I don't know, I'm gonna have to think about how do I wanna actually fix this. So I ended up patching with JB Quick Steel. I'm not loving the repair. Like I said before, I wish I could braise. That would have at least looked correct. You know, period correct anyway. That's something that would have been done in the 50s. But this just looks stupid on there. I've used it before, I've had good results with it. Um, it comes, it's a putty, and you uh, knead it together until it's all one uniform color, and uh, just apply it. Get your fingers wet when you do it, that'll really help you apply it and not have it stick to your fingers. Like I said, I've used it before in a transfer case actually, that was cracked, 
and it sealed it up, so I'm hoping that it will seal this up as well. If not, I guess we'll have to buy a new uh, lower half of the carburetor. I don't know, we'll have to start scouring eBay or something. But for now, I just want to see if the thing will run. So I'm going to throw the car back together and uh, try and fire it up.